Hello everyone and welcome to round 11 of this year's FIDE Candidates Tournament. The first game that we are covering, Vidit Gujarati versus Yanni Ponishi. Uh, definitely a, a game that could decide the winner of the FIDE Candidates Tournament, but as we are going into the uh, few final rounds, every game is the game that could decide the winner of the FIDE Candidates Tournament. Uh, Vidit going into the round with 5 points, uh, Jan going into the round with 6 points. If uh, Vidit, uh, Vidit uh, wins, um, uh, he will catch up to Jan and uh, maybe join, uh, join the leaders uh, of the tournament. And it would go a long way for Vidit, definitely. So far uh, in classical chess over their entire life, they have played eight classical games. Five of those uh, ended in a draw and three of those were won by Nepo, one of them being won here in the Candidates Tournament in the first half of the tournament. So it's um, a pretty pretty big uh, uh, you know, deal for, for Vidit. He's never defeated Nepo and now, okay, he has the white pieces. This is uh, as good a chance that he will probably... Uh, get in in a very long time to, to do so. Uh, so let's check it out. Uh, Vidit with the white pieces opens with pawn to e4. And of course, uh, by this point, it's not a surprise what Nepo will play pawn to e5. Uh, no one uh, has yet been able to do any damage to his Petrov defense. So of course, we are expecting that. We have knight f3, knight to f6, Nepo goes for the Petrov, uh, and knight captures an e5. We have d6, but not, not uh, knight to f3. That uh, was played in all of the games against Nepo, but rather knight to c4 and uh, really uh, aside from knight to f3 and knight captures an f7 which is not kind of a move you play in classical uh, knight to c4 is the only other option uh, and there are well really only a few games in top level chess where this was played uh, Wei Yi uh, played this a few games, uh, Rapport played this, so, you know, okay, the, the definitely a wizard move, but even Wei Yi and Rapport uh, uh, got, got very poor results with this uh, move, I think, with it. Uh, Wei Yi only got one draw. Uh, all the other games uh, were lost. But okay, knight captures on e4. We have queen to e2, now uh, uh, pinning the knight. The knight cannot move, and of course, queen to e7. And now, knight to c3. Uh, you could also consider some other moves. Uh, Wei Yi, for example, played knight to e3 here uh, but here we have knight to c3 knight captures on c3 b captures and here the first real thing of the game nepo goes for bishop to g4 other known moves are just queen captures on e2 uh, also knight to c6 uh, sorry, knight to c6 is a known move but after bishop to g4 it is now already as of move 7 that we have a completely new game and uh, we even have a nice photo of this moment uh, uh, so let's uh, just uh, check it out. Okay, it's not uh, Bishop to G4 wasn't played yet, but yeah, it's uh, somewhere in there. Nepo is uh, pondering uh, uh, on the position, considering that Bishop to G4 move. So you can see, very nice photo. Uh, uh, India versus Fide. Uh, Nepo brought his big uh, e e eagle uh, thermos bottle. Uh, so yeah, just, uh, you know, uh, two, two gentlemen playing some, some good moves. Uh, so yeah, bishop to g4 and queen captures on e7. Queen captures on e7 is Vidit's first think of the move, and he spent some 21 minutes on this move, saying that both of them are now out of out of their preparation. We have bishop captures and rook to b1. Makes sense, you could also consider some other moves, but uh, you have the semi-open b file, the b7 pawn is now weak as the bishop has been developed, so uh, obviously a very good move by Vidit. We have b6, uh, and now pawn to d4, grabbing more space in the center, bishop to e e6 back, and now pawn to a4. Uh, we have castles by Nepo, uh, and now knight back to e3. We have bishop to g5. Uh, okay, Nepo does have the bishop pair, uh, but uh, also uh, it has a uh, better central control, and he does have the semi-open b file for, for the rook, and he also has the bishop pair. So it's it's an equal position. Uh, we have pawn to c4, and now rook to e8. And now... Uh, okay, how do you how do you continue this? It's very annoying having your king on e1. For example, you play something like a bishop to d3, already bishop to d7, and you're not very happy. So that's why uh, Vidit played pawn to h4, attacked Nepo's bishop, bishop to f6, and now he just played pawn to c3, uh, defending the d4 pawn this way. Now, uh, okay, you could also play bishop to b2, but uh, then you allow pawn to d5. And... Um, the, the the problem is that there's really nothing, not much to be gained here with white. For example, you capture bishop captures, now you don't really have c4 due to bishop to e4 attacking the rook here. So we're going to play bishop to e2, and now after, let's say, bishop to e4, pawn to d5, and okay, bishop captures on b2, let's say captures and pawn to c6, pawn to c4. Uh, it does seem like white has some pressure of maybe creating a passed pawn at some point, but the more likely is that the pawn will get attacked and you will have to play d captures on c6. Uh, and have a uh, 
uh, zero pressure for, for the rest of the game and Jan will, will just equalize very uh, easily. So that's why Vidit plays pawn to c3, uh, keeps the tension and now pawn to c5 by Jan, not pawn to d5. Pawn to d5 here uh, would actually be met with captors, captors and pawn to f3 just stopping bishop to e4 and then uh, c4, d5 would be actually very strong. So okay, after c5, Nepo plays c3, wants to put pressure on uh, Vidit center and uh, so he does and the bishop to d3. Another long thing by Vidit, some 15 minutes on this uh, move, and you can see that Vidit is already down to 39 uh, minutes on the clock, and uh, now I see that you don't uh, see how much uh, time Nepo has on the clock for some reason, as, yeah, the, the OBS has not updated itself. Uh, let me just try to fix this uh, with some with some tricky moves. There we go. Yeah. Just updating the layer did it really, really interesting stuff how, how this works. But okay, bishop to d3. And then you can see Nepo is much better on time, an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, and now knight to c6. A move that should not be possible. d5 seems to seems to win, win a piece here, but Vidit's bishop on d3 is also undefended. So that's why uh, you can, you, you not only uh, can you play it, uh, but it's also good for both white and black. And if you don't do it, uh, well, then the d4 pawn is just uh, attacked too many times. So d5, knight e 5 attacks the bishop, and bishop captures on h7 with check. Vidit snatches a pawn, as he will capture on e6 and give it back um, uh, later. So king captures d captures with f captures. Nepo improves his presence in the center, uh, and now king to e2. You would also love to castle here, but then you just blunder the h4 pawn, so king to e2. Uh, we have rook a to d8, Nepo now with full development, uh, and pawn to g4. Uh, this is uh, uh, Vidit's idea. He wants to go after the black king with some g5, h5, g6, h6 moves. Uh, a5, maybe open up the b file, go rook b7, and uh, pu put some uh, immense pressure on that black king. So here, pawn to g6, and we have pawn to g5 by Vidit. Pawn to h5 is obviously met with pawn to g5. Nepo uh, will not be opening up the h file for the rook. So after g6, we have pawn to g5, bishop to g7, and now we have pawn to a5. Uh, very, very interesting move by Vidit. Uh, uh, if you go pawn to h5 here, it's, uh, it is interesting, but it doesn't do all that much. For example, pawn to f4 attacks the knight, and after the knight moves, you will play rook captures on h5, and after king goes to g6 to attack the rook, you will move the rook, and now rook to f8 will go after the pawn, for example. And now knight g2 will defend the pawn and also prepare knight to h4. You will go knight to a5, uh, and now... Okay, the c4 pawn is hanging, but you also have some wizardry here with some pawn to f5 check ideas. Let's see, captures on f5, knight to h4 check, forcing the king to go under the mask of the rook. Uh, so king f7, knight captures on f5, and you will get this position, which is, again, uh, still perfectly fine, but... Um, uh, uh, would uh, burn uh, way, way too much time to calculate. So Vidit plays pawn to a5. It's a positional idea. Of course, you, you give up a pawn to play rook b7, and then, of course, you are, you're are you just hoping that this works. Uh, and uh, while Nepo could ignore this, play something like rook to b8, no, he just takes the pawn and allows Vidit to go rook to b7. If there's this sort of an anti-positional uh, engine move um, uh, in question, Nepo will always uh, find it and play it. Uh, rook to b7, and now rook to d7. This is how Nepo defends. Uh, a bit cleaner would be to go rook to f8, and then after rook to d1, going after the d6 pawn, just play this annoying rook f7 move. And now after rook captures, knight captures, you have it uh, very nicely defended. Now you can either move the rook or move the knight. The d6 pawn will be very nicely defended. However, Nepo went for rook to d7 instead. Rook captures, knight captures, and now rook to d1. So how are you defending the d6 pawn now? You have to move the bishop. Bishop to f8, and now knight to g4. Putting pressure on uh, on uh, uh, black's king side that f6 square is now weak. If the knight moves, you're going to win the rook. So rook to b8, of course, moving the rook, uh, gaining control over, the, over white's back rank, if possible. So bishop to f4, and now rook to b2 with check. We have king to f3 and pawn to e5. This is how the uh, pawn remains alive with bishop back to e3 and now knight to b6. Putting pressure on that c4 pawn, 
Knight to f6 with check, we have king to h8 and now king to e4, marching the king forward and we reach a, a very interesting position. Uh, the time uh, on the clock is 11 minutes for Vidit, 18 minutes for Nepo and uh, Nepo can grab the c4 pawn if he wants to. He can also advance the a4 pawn if he wants to. Uh, the problem is if you, if you snatch this pawn, it uh, you just burn valuable time. Uh, meaning that after king to d5, you will okay, go knight b6 check, you allow king to e6 and now uh, there's a problem. Okay, you could also set up a, a defense here. Maybe you, you overprotect d6, but then you allow even king to f7. And then let's say bishop g7, you allow h5. And now it doesn't matter. Rook to h1 will be winning. Uh, or you go for something like rook to b7 with check, then king captures. And g6, let's say knight to e7 with check, you'll play king to f7. No useful discoveries here. Let's say knight d5 check, you'll play king to e6. And after knight captures an e3, f captures, uh, there's no defense. Pawn a4, let's say pawn to h6, bishop to f8, uh, and now just knight to d7, and you cannot save this bishop. There's no way you can do it. If you defend it with a king, of course, uh, any move wins really. Also, rook to f1, just very elegant, uh, not, not much to be done here. So uh, uh, that that would be a very poor choice uh, by Nepo. So he just goes pawn to a4, of course. Even by without calculating, Nepo knows that pawn to a4 is the correct idea. Uh, rook to a1, Vidit of course knows that it's important to, to put the rook in front of the pass pawn. Rook to b3 going after the c3 pawn, but also covering the a3 square. Uh, and here we have a uh, king to d3. Uh, here Vidit misses pawn to h5, but okay, he does have uh, like nine minutes on the clock, but pawn to h5 here. Uh, would have been very interesting because now if rook captures on c3 you have h captures on g6 and after rook captures on c4 you have king to f5 and now you, you have to stop rook to h1 so we're going to play rook to h4 and now knight to e8 and after let's say king to g8 you will play king to e6 and it's very very hard to hold this uh you know, maybe with engine-like precision it's possible, but uh, other than that, uh, White will just uh, uh, win this. It's not, uh, not not a very easy move. For example, Rook to H2, you will play Pawn to G7, and after Bishop captures on G7, uh, there's this very nasty Knight to F6 check, and there's now not much um, uh, you can do here. For example, King to H8, F4 is coming. And now you either allow the pawn to advance forward or you capture, then bishop captures and uh, everything just uh, opens up. For example, rook to e2 with check, king to f7 comes, now rook to h1 will be the uh, the mate threat. You have to block this uh, by playing something like, well, there's really nothing. Rook h2 is impossible, bishop cannot block. Uh, there's nothing here. And of course, uh, if you take, uh, that is still insufficient. Rook to h1 check. Uh, rook to h2 is the only move and then rook captures will be checkmate. So only one of the... Uh, possible winning lines, but h5 definitely the way to go for Vidit. However, king to d3 was played here, uh, and now Nepo continues pushing, pawn to a3. Uh, okay, bishop to c1 goes after the pawn here, and now pawn to a5 by Nepo. Uh, another interesting idea here is definitely a knight to a4 going after the c3 pawn, but then knight to d5 defends it, and then knight to b2 with check. Uh, and now after, let's say, king to c2, you will move the rook, and finally after knight to e3, defending the c4 pawn, you will play e4. And now, finally, after rook captures on a3, you will play knight to d3 and win the f2 pawn. So it's a... Uh, it's a beautiful line, but uh, of course Nepo is better on time, and he doesn't want to burn precious time. He will he he will rather allow Vidit to burn precious time. So okay, pawn to a5. The other pawn starts marching forward, and Vidit captures the pawn on a3. And again, Vidit's position is much much better here. But uh, here comes uh, one of those moves that uh, you know it, it's like a Jedi mind trick. It it, it doesn't work, and you, you should completely ignore it. But uh, if anyone else played it, it wouldn't work. But when Nepo plays it for some reason uh, it always works here nepo plays pawn to d5 and this just uh, should not be possible uh he gives up the d5 pawn for some so for some seemingly uh devilish trickery with some let's say you you capture the pawn and then maybe the rook captures the bishop and then rook captures and then pawn to c4 check uh, picks up the rook and with it just doesn't have enough time to work all of this out uh, but he should play knight captures on d5 although I have to show it to you. This game, we're going to show, uh, you know, um, uh, maybe a few lines too many. 
but uh, they are so incredible that we have to check them out. Knight captures on d5, c captures, now rook captures on a3 seems to be completely crushing for Nepo. Uh, rook captures and pawn to c4 with check, but after king captures and bishop captures on a3, yes, Nepo is up a piece, but Virit is the one who's completely winning here. There's nothing you can do here. Uh, for example, king b5, uh, bishop to d6, you have to play something. Uh, you cannot defend the pawn, but of course, uh, Virit wouldn't be even interested in the pawn. Like pawn c4, king to g7, pawn to c5, bishop to b8, now king captures on a5, and after the king uh, enters the game, king to b6. And now, okay, king to e8, you will play king to b7, and after bishop to d6, there's no move, bishop is trapped, let's say bishop to d6, okay, you mess up white's pawn structure and play king to d7, the problem is h5. And now after g captures and g6, the two the two pass pawns are, are too strong and black is just too slow. Uh, you will queen h2 and now it's even a very nice checkmate. Queen e6 check, king to d8 and queen to c8 will be checkmate. Uh, one or only one of many. Uh, so yeah, knight captures on d5, uh, uh, a tough a tough miss for Vidit. Uh, Vidit played king to c2, uh, wanted to, to save time on the clock. He's down to, uh, below five minutes, but now d captures on c4. And I'm pretty sure Nepo was... I, I do not believe this actually worked uh, because, now of course, Nepo did not calculate all of that. He knew it was uh, playable, uh, but still he was probably expecting for Vidit to, to, to capture that pawn. We have knight to e4 and now rook back to b5. Uh, and okay, we have rook to d1, getting the rook back into the game, hoping to get rook to d8. So bishop to e7, now the bishop and knight creating a nice wall here against the, the white rook. Rook to e1 and now king to g7. Uh, we have knight to d2 and bishop to d6, just defending the e5 pawn. Uh, and here we have knight to e4. Uh, now, this is already move 41. So time control has been reached. Uh, more time on the clock has been granted. Additional 30 minutes uh, to both players. Uh, and now knight to e4. Vidit again burns 10 minutes. He's still trying to win this as he was winning uh, at some point, even uh, uh, on several occasions. So bishop to e7, controlling the knight, and now knight to g3. We have rook to b3, again putting pressure on that c3 pawn, maybe knight a4, rook captures could be done. Uh, so bishop back to c1, and now knight to d5, going after the c3 pawn this way, and knight to e4, again just defending. So really nothing is happening here, but Nepo does have double time on the clock. So king to f7, uh, we have bishop to d2, and pawn to a4 now. Uh, as uh, Nepo is the only one with the pass pawn, so he might as well advance it all the way. You know, good things might happen. We have rook back to a1, uh, and now knight back to b6, just defending the pawn. We have bishop to e3, uh, putting pressure on that c5 pawn, and rook to b5, sorry, oh, that would be a mistake, rook to b5, just defending the c5 pawn. Uh, knight back to d2, going after the c4 pawn, and rook to a5 now, now preparing just to advance the pawn. King to b2, stopping the advancement, and now king to e6. And uh, Vidit says, all right, although it might be a weird move, king to a3 uh, basically controls the entire queen side. This uh, uh, just controls everything here. The pawns, the knight, the rook, the, the bishop is useless here, so it's uh, it, it, it's a very good move. Uh, but it allows Nepo to, to find, again, some devilish trickery, which Nepo is so excellent at finding. Rook to b5. And now, what's the uh, what's the point of rook to b5? Well, Nepo, by playing king to e6, he's saying, I want to go uh, king g4, and I want to just uh, gobble up all of the pawns here and win the game. Uh, on the other hand, if you, let's say, play pawn to f4, you want to trade a pawn here, maybe uh, get rid of the, the pass pawn on e5, uh, get the bishop into the game, the trick is rook to b3 check. That's what Nepo wants. And now, after knight captures and c captures, those pawns are just too strong. And you don't have c4 here. That's the problem because the knight also covers the c4 square uh, and it will come with an attack on the bishop. So let's say bishop to f2 and also just knight to c4 will uh, come with check regardless of whether the pawn is there. So let's say bishop to f2, now pawn to c4 check and this is winning for, for Nepo. King, b, uh, king b2, let's say a3 with check. You will play king to b1. To avoid any sort of nasty pawn forks, knight to a4, uh, and now after bishop to e1, guarding the pawn here, just a2 with check, king to c1, b2 check, and you resign here. Ah, so that, that's what Nepo wants. 
So if it spots this, plays rook to c1, uh, very nice. Now, now rook to b3 would be just bad because after you capture and c captures, the rook is supporting the pawn and now you advance it to c4, you, you block the pawn, you block the knight, you block the bishop, this is now uh, excellent for white. I mean, it's still a draw, but uh, much better than the line that we've shown. So yeah, rook to c1, uh, and now nipple plays king to f5. He wants to go after the h4 pawn and just pawn to f3, creating a wall here against the uh, nipple's king. Knight to d5 attacks the bishop and the pawn, and of course now king captures on a4, saying, okay, you take my bishop, I'm going to take your rook here. So rook back to b8, and now comes knight captures on c4, uh, pawn to e4. Just uh, remarkable how Nippo uh, finds these moves that allow him to, to, to put pressure on the position. All of these moves are still, uh, you know, drawish equalish but uh N nepo does appear to be the one pushing here even with less time on the clock uh knight captures and uh sorry f captures an e4 with check king captures attacks the bishop and bishop back to f2 and now okay if you go to, to f3 uh, still bishop p1 you you guard the, the king side pawns not uh, not very useful so of course nepo goes king to d3 attacks the knight and here uh, very, very tricky position. You could uh, uh, move the knight right away with knight e5 check. Vidit wants to make it tricky. He plays bishop to g3. Even though knight e5 is, uh, okay, not, uh, Vidit has three minutes on the clock. So if you go for something like this, you attack the rook, let's say rook to g1, you still have to find knight captures on c3 with check. And after king a5, bishop to d8 with check, king to a6, rook to b6 with check, king a7, knight to b5 with check, king to a8, and you have to calculate that your king is actually safe on a8. But I mean, uh, with three minutes on the clock, and I mean, this being the candidate's tournament, the tension is just incredible here. Um, yeah, maybe maybe not the easiest uh, spot. Uh, so Vidit played bishop to g3. He attacked Nepo's rook here, and now Nepo has many options here. He could just uh, go for some sort of a, a king hunt here, but he plays knight captures on c3 with check. And this is uh, uh, this is definitely the moment uh, of the game. Here, uh, Vidit has to decide what to do here, and uh, it, it's a pretty simple choice. Like, you, you play rook captures on c3, and that's it. Uh, but I guess uh, the tension of the candidates tournament got to Vidit, uh, uh, and uh, well, not only the tension of the candidates tournament, but also he has a minute and thirty seconds on the clock, and uh, it, it appears to be losing. It appears to be losing because after you capture and bishop captures on b8, king captures on c4. Yes, material is equal, but look at the white king completely boxed in. Uh, yeah, you just don't have time to calculate properly if you if you can draw this, but we will show it why it's a draw. After, let's say, bishop to e5 and you go king to d5, you can either start advancing the pawn uh, or get your king over here and uh, try to gobble up the king side pawns. But whatever you do, uh, it doesn't work. Let's say, go, let's say bishop to c3, king to c4, uh, all of a sudden you find bishop to f6. And now you cannot trade because the white pawn will be faster. So you're going to play bishop to f8 and now comes h5. Now with ideas of h6 and just queening the pawn. So you're going to capture it and after g6, uh, of course g7 is coming. But after king d5, let's say g7 captures, captures and pawn to c4. Uh, bishop to f6 and this holds the... Uh, the the fort that's the that's the key idea for example king e4 king to a3 king to d3 you're gonna play king to b2 and you don't uh, have anything here if you if you advance the pawn then just king to c1 so nothing really happening there uh, if you try king to d2 then just bishop to g5 check you force the king back and then you move the bishop back uh, and uh, other than that, if you sacrifice uh, the pawn with h4 uh, after king to b2, you can just capture it because after c3 check, again, you get the c1 square and there's no queening the pawn. So that's why after this knight captures um, on c3 move, uh, it was uh, a crucial uh, to play rook captures on c3. But Vidit doesn't. He plays king to a3, which is still fine. It's still equal, but... Uh, uh, it, it gives Nepo uh, a lot of uh, possibilities uh, uh, to push. And he plays rook to b4. Uh, the knight doesn't have uh, all that many squares. The knight uh, uh, is attacked. The knight can either come to b2 or to e5, uh, uh, bo both coming with checks. And now the question is, what, do you would, wh what would you play here? Uh, if you haven't seen the video, it might uh, even be a good pause the video moment. So yeah, just uh, put yourself in Vidit's shoes. You uh, you have less than a minute on the clock. You're playing the candidates tournament. You have a chance to join the leaders by taking down the leader of the candidates tournament. Uh, feel free to pause the video and try to find the only move that doesn't lose for Vidit. Uh, 
uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, spectacular idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is knight to e5 with check. Uh, knight to e5 with check, Vitis played knight to b2 with check. And it's important uh, uh, to play both moves to see what the difference is. The difference is after knight to e5 check and this king to d2 move, let's say you play rook to g1. Now, after pawn to c4, threatening nasty discoveries here, you have bishop to e1 with check. And after the king moves, you will play, or rather, after the king moves to, uh, to e2, you will play bishop captures on c3. And now, after, let's say, rook to b1 with check, winning the rook on g1, you will find bishop to b4. This is the tricky move that allows you to uh, stay in the game. And after bishop captures, king to a4 and now after rook captures on g1 king captures on b4 and this is now a draw yes you you will win the c4 pawn there's no stopping that and you have sufficient uh, uh, resources to, to get a draw here but still you would uh, suffer and it, it would not be easy uh, but a vidit played knight to b2 with check and this is now winning for Jan. king to d2 we have rook to f1 and now pawn to c4. But now the same idea no longer works because now if you play bishop to e1 check, now king to c2. And after bishop captures, of course, just rook captures uh, with check and the bishop falls as well. King a3, king captures on c3 and uh, you are dead lost here, just down a, down a full bishop. So after c4, uh, rook to f2 was played with check. Uh, we have knight to e2 blocking and now bishop to e5. If king a2 just pawn to c3, the knight is trapped. That's the, the the, uh, sad story of this knight. So bishop to e5 was played, but still just pawn to c3. And the problem is you don't have bishop captures on c3. For example, king captures and rook captures on e2 because rook to e4 with check again uh, wins material. For example, king a2, rook captures on e2, and that's it. So after c3, rook to f7 was played attacking the bishop here, but now just rook to b7 with check. Uh, a, a discovery defense, if you will. Uh, king to a4, uh, and now, well, you could play C captures on B2. Of course, no one would blame you if you did this, but uh, it would seem that Nepo is also an artist and not a butcher. He plays pawn to C2, just uh, allows the knight to stay alive, prepares the queen the pawn. And now the problem is if you play rook to F1, uh, there's this very nasty check, knight to C3 check. And if you capture here, again, the problem is your knight is hanging. And if you play knight to D1 check, hoping to give up the knight uh, to, to get rid of this passed pawn, uh, of course, uh, black will just ignore you. And then after you play knight f2, just king to c4, and the white king is getting checkmated, you are no longer interested in the pawn. If king a5, just bishop c5, and there is no defense against rook to a7 mate, all of the squares here are covered. So that's uh, uh, only one of your problems. So knight to c4 check was played. Uh, by Vidit, we have king to d3, uh, and now knight to b2 with check. Here, uh, Nepo played king to e4, and he was in this position on move 67 that Vidit Gujarati resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So, very heartbreaking loss for Vidit. He was winning not once, but twice in this game. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Nepo, uh, truly a Jedi master. He just uh, makes moves and his opponents believe him. It's absolutely incredible how he does this. He always does it and it always works. Well, uh, almost almost always. Uh, otherwise, he would be the, the world champion. Uh, but, yeah, we even have a very, very uh, sad video or, you know, a very joyous video from Nepo's perspective. Um, uh, so, so let's just enjoy that for, 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 for a brief moment. And Vidit knows it. He's panicking. Mm -hmm. He's got seconds on the clock, but the clock doesn't help. He falls back with a check, but it's only a check. It's only delaying the inevitable for Vidit. King it's does the final reach move. the center. He shakes his head. He can't believe it. This is so that difficult is for Vidit. So hard to watch. You just fight for more than five hours. You keep yourself in the race. You've got a great position. You keep fighting. And then in the last moments, you know it's all over. And that's it. It's handshakes. Vidit Gujarati resigns. 
So as you can see, very, very tough loss. You don't even have time to come to terms with your loss. The clock is ticking. You had 30 seconds on the clock when, when this position happened. And, you know, you just don't know whether to, to look for something. Maybe there's something. Maybe there's some sort of a miracle. Uh, do you just let the, the clock run out? Do, do you just, you know, uh, uh, shake your opponent's hand? I mean, it's a roller coaster of emotions uh, for, for Vidit. But, yeah, he... Uh, he uh, dealt with it uh, like a true gentleman, as he always does, and, you know, he even analyzed the game a little bit afterwards with Jan, so, yeah, definitely a, a, a true soldier uh, uh, surveyed it here. And you you resign here because now C1 uh, is the threat of becoming a queen, and if you block that, then just king captures an E5, you're, down, you're up a full piece. And uh, but you still have nothing to show for like king to d4. You're gonna play knight to c1, block the pawn. Then comes king c4, and again you are checkmating the white king. It's really no longer a matter of the of the pawn. Uh, so yeah, a really a really tough loss for for Vidit, but for Nepo this means, and I will now spoil the results of other games as well uh, from round 11. So stop watching if you're not interested in that. Uh, here are the standings after round 11. Uh, and Nepo is now in sole, sole lead um, uh, of the tournament. Alireza uh, has defeated Nijat Abasov, but it does very little for his tournament standings. But uh, Hikaru Nakamura has defeated Pragnananda. Uh, and now we have Nepo in the lead, but uh, Gukesh and Hikaru in close pursuit with 6.5. Fabiano still in contention, definitely with 6 points. Prague with 5.5, Vidit with uh, 5, uh, Alreza with 4.5, and, and Nijat Abasov with 3. And with 3 more rounds to go, uh, I would say that, uh, well, it, it's very, very hard to say, but uh, yeah, I think anything can still happen. Like, even Alireza, if he wins all of his 3 games, gains uh, get, gets on 7.5, and, and for example, Nepo loses all 3 games, Gukesh loses all 3 games, Hikaru. <laughs> yeah, I mean, anything could still happen, so I don't want to... Uh, you know, uh, uh, say anything weird, uh, but uh, yeah, of course, it does appear that uh, Nepo, Gukesh, Hikaru, and Fabiano are the only one with uh, some, you know, actual winning chances. Uh, but it's still uh, very hard to say because uh, Nepo's opponents for the for the remaining three rounds are uh, Pragnananda, Hikaru, and Fabi. So it's not going to be easy for Nepo in those last three rounds. But he he's undefeated so far. Uh, so, you know, we are, of course, expecting great things for, from Nepo, but, uh, of course, anything uh, uh, can still happen. Uh, so, yeah, uh, very, very, very interesting game. Uh, definitely the, the thriller of the, of, the, of the round. We're going to show at least uh, one more game. Uh, so, yeah, I uh, ho hope you guys enjoyed this, and, yeah, I uh, hope it recovers uh, and comes back uh, uh, strong for, for, for the remainder of the tournament. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Mark Jensen, uh, Stanislav Kuperstein, Andrea Sorcinelli, Johan Bridger, and Jerry Drever for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and everything else that happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And sorry for uh, if I've shown uh, you know a line too many this video, but uh, as you've seen, they were very very important to, to the to, to the entire situation. Uh, see you soon.